In this class of our tutorial, we want to talk about Islamic uh, geometric pattern and how we can make it from scratch in Grasshopper. Uh, as you can see, we can change the pattern by a number slider and define different parameters. And we can also define a point attractor and change the form based on an attractor. For example, you can see that this point attractor is changing the results. So this tutorial will help you to understand uh, uh, from scratch how we can make this uh, pattern. Be sure to watch the video till the end because first we have to make the face of this pattern which is the curves. Then we're going to add another step at the end to define the borders and extract them. And at the end we're going to give them some thickness like this. So be sure to watch the video till the end. We're going to uh, cover this uh, in this tutorial. So let's take a look at the algorithm from scratch and see how we can get the curves and give them some thickness. Uh, first of all, we're going to define a complete base uh, polygons in Rhino. Uh, this is basically the polygons which the patterns will be produced inside them. And by defining this polygon, we can uh, use a, a linear array to produce them in the x direction and another one in the y direction. So you can see that they are tessellating without any uh, duplicates. Uh, after that, we're going to uh, deconstruct them into their vertices with the explode command. And we're going to extract the centroid. Uh, first, let me just show you in this one that we're going to uh, dispatch them into three groups. It's going to be like the polygons with 12 edges, like this. We're going to use dispatch. Then we're going to uh, have those with the six the hexagons. And then we have the squares, like this. So we have uh, three outputs. Each of these polygons are going to be, uh, uh, we're going to find the centroid and then find also the mid edge of the polygons. This is also uh, the same thing we're going to do for the hexagons and the squares. And finally, we're going to connect a line from the corners to the center and move a point. Show you here. Move a point on that line. You can see uh, we are actually changing this point by changing the slider. And finally, we're going to beep them into a polyline. Which is going to be like this. Uh, turn this on. So the basic is really easy. Uh, the logic is easy. You have to move the point on a line and then connect that to the mid edge and produce something like that. Uh, this is going to also happen for all of the polygons. So let's just turn them off and turn them on. You can see that this is going to be in the uh, a polygon with 12 edges, the hexagons, and then the squares. Finally, we're going to, let's just turn this off. Uh, we're going to define a rectangle from the center of this polygon to this polygon and trim all the extra curves. So we're going to have them like this. Turn that off have something like this. Uh, finally, we're going to split the space surface, which is completely a box with the sections. And you can see that we will have the boundaries, which we can have all of the boundaries as the results. And then we're going to use an offset with, uh, offset with boundary also to produce some thickness. And finish the tutorial. So that's going to give you the final thickness, which we can change. And then we can also have some windows. Let's turn this off and give it into two groups, which is the windows and the frame. So in this tutorial, we're going to do all of these steps from scratch and uh, make this happen at the end. So uh, be sure to watch the video till the end. But before we start, if you're new to our channel, welcome and subscribe. 
that we have weekly tutorials about Grasshopper. And I'm going to also put up a playlist which is related to Grasshopper if you're a beginner and you want to learn about it. A one hour tutorial which is the basics and how you can get started. So be sure to watch that video if you don't know anything about Grasshopper. If you want to also be a pro competitional designer, learn more tips and tricks in Grasshopper, you can enroll in our course. I'm going to put up the playlist. Uh, we have weekly tutorials also for the course and also extra materials, tutorials, and we are adding them weekly. So be sure to enroll in our course. You can check out the playlist up here. Okay, let's get started from scratch and make those steps step by step in Grasshopper. Okay, before <coughs> we start the tutorial, if you search Islamic star pattern Hankin method, which is uh, also called polygons in contact, uh, what we want to do is to produce a series of, series of polygons and then produce the stars inside them, okay? Let me go into the Rhino and you can see this picture. Zoom in. Uh, for this pattern, we have a tutorial which we have explained about the uh, four and eight polygons uh, pattern. I'm going to put that up if you want to check that out. This is also a basic tutorial. For this tutorial, we want to focus on this one, which is a polygon with 12 edges, then the hexagons, and then we will have the four, which is the squares. Okay, uh, what we have to do and is really important in this part is to find a pattern which is going to be tessellated without duplicates. So how can we do that? Uh, this is the main uh, component we want to do because if you just copy this and make a copy and put this here into here, you can see that this part is going to, this part is going to uh, cover this part of the missing polygons. And also, because we have a square here, it's going to have a contact into this part. And also, when we just have a copy and put this up, this is going to completely connect that. So what we have to do is really easy. Uh, first, get rid of this and make this also from scratch. Uh, I'm going to use a polygon center radius, put this to 12 and put it like an edge, for example, like this one, you can see that this is the edge, okay? Then we can just find the centroid by typing area centroid and draw again a hexagon with an edge here, like this part, and make an array of this. Uh, I'm going to use the array polar to Array polar like this six times around the center. Again, we need a complete square with uh, make this four edges and edge like this part, and also make an array polar on this center with six on the center. Okay, that's the base unit, and now we want to find how uh, we want to tessellate that. Uh, as I explained, okay? The first thing is that, how can we copy this? If I make a copy and put it here, you can see that this is not the exact array of tessellation because it's going to give you something like this, which is uh, wrong. So what we need here is a square. I'm going to add this edge square, okay? So that's the first part we have to fix. Uh, the second part is that when we copy this here, we need a polygon. So I'm going to just copy the well, edge, make a copy, and bring it here. So that's it. Again, when we copy this, we bring it here. This is going to fill, and then when we bring it up, Again, it's going to cover every part. Okay. The next challenge is how can we copy this? If we want to define uh, squares here and then copy that up, 
the problem is that we have to define also, for example, if I just go and define another one here and another one with the edge option here, and copy this. We can see that we can't tessellate. So the trick is really easy. What we want to do is, because we want to copy this up, right? Uh, I'm going to put this hexagon here, right? So we have to get rid of this part. This is going to go here, so we're going to get rid of this part, and this is going to be copied here. Uh, that's the trick, and then we will have the unit. So that's really easy. We have to just get the copy from here to here. And then we can again make a copy from here to here. And this will bring us to a point that we don't have any uh, duplicates, and that's exactly what we need. Okay? So I wanted to explain why we define this uh, uh, unit for the array section. So let's just bring that into Grasshopper. In the Farms menu, you can select the curve. Right click set multiple curves and bifocals, right click and internalize so we have this curve inside the grasshopper. That's the first part. And now we can go to the transform and use this array linear array tool to make an array of this. Okay. And the direction is going to be the x. We have to define a factor, so let's just turn this off, and we can go to the params and use this line, and I'm going to set this line. If we didn't delete the curves, we can set a line. In the x direction, we're going to put this from here to here, so this is the line. Uh, you can simply go to the params and select number connected to the line, it's going to find the length of the line. So this is a trick you can use, and then give it to the factor. So I'm going to give that to the factor, and turn this on, we're good to go. And we can say from 1 to maybe 10. That is the count that we can increase the pattern. Okay, uh, we're going to also use this again a linear array, this time in the y direction. Turn this off. Again, we need this minor number. Set this from here to here, and then give it to the y. Okay. To help us to uh, make a linear array also in the y direction. And we can say maybe from 1 to 10 also for the count. Okay, that's it. Now we have the base curves. Let's just get rid of this and go to this part. Because we made this in groups, you can see that we have uh, different groups in groups, inside groups, and then we have seven. Uh, we can just flatten this to put all the 336 curves in one group. And if you don't know about flatten, in graph, you can watch this video, which I have explained about that. So I'm going to just right click and flatten. And now we have 336 polylines. Okay, the next step is to uh, dispatch or put these into three groups, the 12 edge, the hexagons, and the squares. So I'm going to go to the curve, use this explode tool to explode the curves. Then we have to find the segments, the number of segments. I'm going to go to the sets and use this list length tool, list length tool. And then again, we need to flatten this to see all of these numbers. Again, you can see that uh, let me just put a panel to this. You can see some of them are 6, 4, and 12. Okay. And now we can define a logic. 
which we have also a complete section in our course. But for now, we can say in the map, uh, in the operators, we can say uh, equality. We say visit equal to 12. So some of them are going to be true and some of them are going to be false. And then by using the dispatch, if you don't know about this technique I'm using here, which is the dispatch technique, you can also watch this tutorial up here. So we're going to dispatch this list into two groups that is true and false. And that is, let me just connect the surface to these curves. You can see that we have a complete series of 12 pages. Okay, let's just turn this off. Uh, we can just connect the curve to this to have it into this page. Turn everything off. Uh, we're going to copy this logic this time. I'm going to say, uh, we can even give that list link to this part without using this one. And say this. And the list, okay, there was a problem here, let me just delete everything and copy paste this. It's easier to understand. So here we just put this to six and extract the hexagon. Again, just make a copy and put this to four and then extract the squares. Okay, that is how you can uh, define three different polygons, the 12 edge hexagons, and then the squares. Now let's just zoom in and work on this part. Uh, I've explained that we can connect the corner to the center and then move a point uh, on this line, right? So we're going to do that now. Let's go to the curve and select this polygon center. Here, uh, we can go to the uh, curve and select a line. Now what we want to do is to connect the center to the corners. So we need the corners, again, curve, load in the utility, and then we have this vertices. Okay, the problem here is that you can see that there are lots of lines connecting to each other, and that is because this one is in the groups. We have 56 polygons, which each of them have 13 lines. Uh, what I want to do is to right click and graph this input. Okay, uh, so if you don't know about this flatten and graph thing, remember to watch that video which I have explained. So I'm going to just graph this and here we go, we have this. Now, what we want to do is to find a point on these lines. We can go here and evaluate the curve or you can go and use point on curve. You can both of them are going to be okay. I'm going to use the evaluate curve because it's more controllable. And now I'm going to right click and reparameterize, so it's going to be from 0 to 1. We have to make a point on this. Okay, so let's just make a number slider between 0 and 1. And you can see that we are moving on these lines. Turn them off. Now we need another series of points, which is mid edge. Uh, now we can select this point on curve, give it to the segments. You can see that we can select, right click, and go with the mid. And now we have to connect them together. It's going to be like one of this connecting to that again and till the end. So we're going to pick between these two set of groups. That is called a tool called B. Okay. So if we want to pick between them, uh, we have also talked about this in the previous tutorials. So I'm going to just say B between this point and this point. These are the streams. You can also add other streams if you want to. And this is the pattern. You can see the default pattern is 0, 1. That means 1 from the 0 and then 1 from 1 again, 0, 1, 0, 1. That's going to weave those points. Uh, so let's just turn off the vertices. And now, if you want to see the results, you can connect a polyline to the V results. And you can see 
If you see something like that, that means that the connection of the 0 and the 1, the stream has to be flipped. So this is going to be the 1, this is going to be the 0, and that's okay. So remember that you can change the 0 to 1. That is how the pattern course goes. Or you can say go to the pattern and set multiple integers and make it like 1, 0. That's the same. You're just changing the number of picking off those points and getting the polyline. Okay, that's the trick. We can just turn everything off and turn this on. We copy this for all of those input things. So I'm just going to delete this and make a copy for all of those inputs. To make them all with one number slider, which we're going to call this a T, we can give it here to the inputs. Let's just delete this. This number slider can define the form. That's the pattern change. If you want to make this a point attractor, uh, you can watch the previous tutorial of, uh, uh, let me just explain this. The tutorial we have talked about this pattern 4.8 which we use also point attractor, but for now, because it's a little bit uh, longer because we want to make a frame and give this a thickness, let's stick to the next steps. So this is the pattern. Now what I want to do is to trim uh, the extra curves. We can connect uh, maybe this or this. Doesn't really matter. Based on your project, you can select from this corner to this corner and trim all the extra curves. So how can we do that? That's not really hard. Uh, for this a pattern of the stars, again I'm going to flatten this. You can see that they are in groups. Uh, let's go and find the centroid, polygon center, and pick up by going to the sets and list item. So I'm going to go to the list item center of the first one is going to be here. That's fine. Just control C, control V. And if I reverse the list, it's going to be automatically here. Okay. If we add this up, you can see it's going down. If we add it here, it's going to jump here. Okay. So remember that we need the first one and the reverse list. Right click and reverse. Okay. These two points are fine. Turn everything off centroid and go to the curve primitive and here we have a rectangle with two points. That's exactly what we want. Point A, point B, and that's it. Okay, so now we find the borders. We can go to the uh, intersection region and trim with the region. That means we can trim uh, a series of curves with the region. Trim. So we want to trim all of these curves. Remember, you have to flatten or flatten the input of the curve because you want all of them in one group. Or you can just flatten this. Doesn't really matter. Just want to show you that you can flatten the output or flatten the input. Okay. It's better to flatten this so all of them are in one group. You can see that we have them. Now we want the region or the curve that's going to uh, trim that. We're going to give the rectangle. The plane by default is an XY plane that does it going to find the best suited one. Okay. Turn everything off. Now we can see that we have inside and outside. Give it a curve from the farms menu. This is inside. This is the extra part. And now we can just flatten to have all of them into uh, the inside of the frame. That is how you can just get the frame and the curves inside it. Now let's just give this a little bit of a thickness. Uh, from this rectangle, I'm going to connect a surface to this. Uh, we can let's just decrease the number of this pattern a little bit too much. You can see if you want to make a square, 
this is going to be 2 times this one with x and y. That's because the unit we have chosen, uh, we have choose before is the problem. You have to make that. You can change that by number, but remember that this is going to be 2 times. So if I put that to 3, make that in a square, okay? And then that you can always use that pattern. The number slider is the trick that we can play with. Okay, and now we have to split it. So I'm going to go to the intersection and physical, use this surface split. That means we want to split a surface with a series of curves. And give it curves, that's it. If I bake the fragments, you can see that we have all of these fragments. That's great. Now we can just give this a curve to this input. And we need some offset part of this. A trick you can use is to use the fillet, this with this icon. You can also find it in the curve. Here's the fillet one. And give it a radius. For this project, I think this is also too much. But let's turn this off. And increase that. Okay, you have everything off. And you can see that this is going to give you uh, curves like this, and then you can offset the results. Just wanted to show you that you can uh, use this offset curve, which you can find in the curve utility offset curve without a plugin. You can see that it's outside the project, so I'm going to go to distance expression and say minus x inside. Okay, uh, the problem here is that some of them, let me just show you this, this is obvious. Some of them are inside, some of them are outside. You can fix that by giving the curve to the plane. Uh, sometimes you can see that, again, some of them are outside, some of them are inside. This is a trick you can. Uh, encounter in any project at Grasshopper, I'm going to give you some tricks. One is to connect the curve to the plane, the next one is to go to the forms and connect a plane and then give it to the plane. If that uh, does, doesn't fix it, again you can go to the surface analyzes and is planar or excuse me, curve analyzes planar, check if the curve is planar, the output is going to give you some plane and give it to the plane. Uh, turn this off. And you can see again we have some problems. The last trick I have found that it's going to help you is to connect that to a surface and then evaluate the surface. Remember that you can reparameterize and then we can give this an MD slider. Doesn't, that doesn't, it's not really important which uh, number slider you're giving, but these planes, the frame is really important. Okay, and you can see that this is going to give you exactly all of them inside. So this is also another trick you can use if you have problems, surface, evaluate surface, reparameterize, and that's a cool trick you can use. If you don't want to use the fillet, you can simply say, okay, let's just offset this. Use the curve and the plane inside. Give it distance minus x. Usually if you don't fill it the results it's going to be fine. You can see that this trick is working. If you give the curve to the plane it's going to extract the right plane. But when you fill it some of those planes are going to flip so you can just fix it with this value surface. That's a trick you can use and if you want to make it organic you can use this one and increase that and also increase the radius. You can see that by increasing the radius for the fillet, you can also have a new pattern. We can play with this number and use different results. You can't give that too much because the offset is going to be broken, but remember that you can make it like this. Okay, the last part is to give it a border. So I'm going to go to the curve and we had it to like a rectangle. 
again we have to make an offset we don't need that we can go from the curved utility the distance is the same distance of the offset here and you can see by turning off we have the same thickness as this one and that's the trick to produce some more thickness now we can go to the surface and use this boundary surface with the shift key connect all of them and flatten so all of them are going to go into the input that's how you can produce the borders you can even extrude it if you want to in the z direction give it some thickness maybe 1.5 and the unit is meters, you can see that this is the thickness and then we can connect from the farms menu a surface to the offset to make windows so we can bake that into layer 1 and bake that into layer 2 and we are good to go you can see how beautiful this is you can use it in your projects and uh, if you don't want with this smooth fillet, you can just uh, dismiss the fillet part and offset it with a simple offset tool. Okay, I hope that this tutorial is useful for you and you're enjoying this uh, Islamic pattern tutorial. Be sure to subscribe to our channel, like this video because it's going to show you more of this uh, tutorials, and subscribe. Uh, see you next time. Bye.